Hi, this is Phil Hinton. Welcome back to another video here on avforums.tv. I'm with Eric Gemmer from THX. Now, one thing that we talk about all the time in our reviews is the THX mode that some manufacturers now have on their plasmas, LCDs and projectors. And this is where that magic happens. This is where the, the sets are set up for that mode. So how important is the THX preset? Okay, our THX mode is a one button solution to try to get an image that's as close to what the producer or director might have seen in the film transfer or the post-production office or facility. Now, one of the, the questions that we always get asked on the forums is, what is the best settings for my TV? I've just bought a new TV, what's the best settings for it? So I guess with THX mode, what you're aiming for is to get the most accurate image to what that material was mastered at. The people uh, who are working in post facilities had traditionally been using CRTs that were designed with a, uh, in, in high definition, mind you, a Rec. 709 uh, gamut, color gamut. That's the range of the primary colors and the limits of that color range. So obviously what we're talking about here is trying to get the consumer TV as close as possible to the professional environment, the professional monitor. Yes, exactly. Because most of these TVs, if they're not designed to operate that way, they would be in nonlinear space. If they're trying to be extra bright or uh, maybe a different color which looks brighter, then when they, you would want to experience the 709 and the D65 white point, the TV would be in nonlinear space. I don't think I can quote you uh, chapter and verse on what facilities do, because there is some variance. People want a certain look, they go to a certain place. Pixar may want a higher gamma so their images look like they have more pop. In general. You know, so, but industry like SMPT and EBU talk about what the, uh, the, the settings of the monitor should be, and people set up their screens that way, and when we bring those settings to our plasma screens or projectors or LCDs. They uh, are set to that same standard and the manufacturer has to work pretty hard to make sure that it once again tracks from brightness to darkest within that range accurately. Another main point of the THX standard is to produce an image that's unaltered in, in any way. So how do you do that with your extended menu system? Okay. The manufacturer brings this TV in really early on in development. And so when we get through with all the static image testing so that it makes uh, a picture like this correctly, we want to look at how does it work with images. And there's all kinds of extra modes that manufacturers are putting in TVs having to do with higher frame rates and noise reduction and sharpness controls and edge definition and how it handles film at 24p and we go through all those with the engineer and look at film-based material to try to make sure that that material comes back on the screen unaltered. In other words, it still has the look of a film that's been transferred to video. So Eric, we've moved over to the other side of the lab here and you have your equipment set out. And I've got to say, apart from the really expensive Konica Minolta uh, color emitter over there, it's more or less the same as what we do for reviews when we test TV. So maybe you could take our viewers through uh, some of the test procedures that you would go through. Okay. Uh, we have the spectral radiometer that measures the light and color of the image it collects. Uh, we have a video generator that is capable of doing RGB and YCBCR and analog outputs at uh, up to 1080p60 and all the frame rates in between. Now what we generally do is we will um, set the white and black level so that we get the range we want from between brightest of uh, THX cinema mode of 35 to as dark as is allowable to still see like a 2% box. Okay, then we proceed and start shooting. In this case, this is a sample of a plasma TV, so we shoot a box and it's important in two cases. One is by shooting a box, you don't degrade the luminance of the image by engaging an uh, APL circuit. In an LCD or projector, you could shoot a full screen, no problem. Yeah. The secondary thing is 
Um, as these data points are collected, we, we do it in a 20-step grayscale and plug it into a spreadsheet. It's yeah. very straightforward. And then do a gamma calculation on the range of brightness of each step. And then we also, because we're collecting color data as well, we can calculate whether the color is accurate at each step. And then the combination of the color and the luminance levels gives you a delta E value. So it shows you that the color and the luminance are in the right position at each of these 20 steps. Now, that's, anybody that reads our reviews will know what we're talking about there with the delta E's and so on. If you want to see the charts, go and have a look at one of the reviews and you can see that more or less it's, it's exactly the same as what you're doing here to Probably. test the TV to the standards. I would expect. Now, the other thing we do is we will look at the primaries in the same way and we will measure uh, stepped different values of red and green and blue, and they're supposed to achieve a narrow range of variance in their color shifts of those colors and the, uh, the gamma of those color. Because otherwise the colors that are pure or even secondary colors can be way off in yeah. a picture. So the manufacturer tries to maintain consistency across those different yeah. lines. Generally, uh, there are cases where the panels are very, the components of the panels are very similar and it, it's a feature set issue or a cabinet issue right. that uh, creates a different model. Okay. So long as it has THX mode, that mode will present itself to be as close as, uh, as the other model. So, um, Eric, it's not just the colour and the contrast and that, that you're going for to correct as well as the grayscale. We're also looking at a pattern here that people might not be aware of what it is f used for. It's a uniformity pattern. So right. you also look at lots more than just the colour and the, the grayscale. Right. We're looking at uh, how the panel performs as a device in, in the case of this. So um, for many years, they've, uh, the Visa has been using a pattern like this with nine targets to determine the uniformity of a panel. And so we use this same idea for uniformity of a rectangular panel. And you'd be surprised that the different technologies have uh, easier or harder time at passing this test. The, um, depending on where the backlight is on an LCD type of TV or a projector and how well its lens disperses the light, can just alter everything beyond, you know, basically a four by three square on this TV. We also do the black uniformity because TVs sometimes suffer from Mura and other uh, kind of spotty or, or marked artifacts. And in the case of plasma TVs, we also use a test pattern like an ANSI contrast box pattern to calculate how well it recovers from image retention. So we run their image retention uh, software and determine that it can resolve the burn-in that comes from just everyday use. And another question that a lot of the forum members, especially the projector owners, have asked about the THX mode is when the lamp ages, mm -hmm. obviously the, the image starts to change. So do you take that into account when you set up your, your original profile for the projector? The lamp aging is a function of what lamp it is more than anything, and, and uh, maybe it runs hotter or cooler in any particular device. The testing is done between 50 and 100 hours of lamp usage when it comes from factory. So if it varies, they should check with the manufacturer as to how soon they should have it recalibrated for that, you know, aging, the changing of the color. Okay, well that's some of the things that Eric gets up to here when testing the, the screens for the THX program. And we're going to go and look at video processing next, so come back and join us soon.